Do you own a digital camera that was made any time within the last 10 years? Do you shoot RAW? Does your digital camera have ISO expansion, specifically the low ISO expansion? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain to you why that's an absolute waste of time and a bit of a con. So let's get stuck into it and I'll explain my reasoning as to why. So I want to start this video off by showing you a couple of photographs side by side. So let's play a little bit of a game of spot the difference. So if you notice this area of the clouds on the image on the left, they're a little bit more overexposed than the same area of the photograph, of the image on the right. If we look at the shadowy areas down here, you'll notice that this seems a little bit more washed out on the image on the left compared to the image on the right. There's a little bit more contrast. Now, these two images are not in fact separate images. They're actually the same image taken at the same time. The image on the left is the JPEG file and the image on the right is the raw file. Now, both of these photos, well, the same photo was taken with the low ISO on my Olympus EM1 Mark II, ISO 100. The base ISO on this camera is 200, so I expanded it down by a stop just to see what would happen. Now, when you drop into the low expansion on your camera, you're not actually lowering the ISO at all. Your camera has a native ISO range and it sticks to that. So the low ISO on this camera is ISO 200. The ISO on the camera that this has been filmed on is ISO 100. All cameras are made differently and native ISO ranges are the same. They're all different on all cameras. The low ISO on this camera is 200. Now, what the camera is actually doing when you select the low ISO is it's actually overexposing the base ISO, the native base ISO, by one stop. So it's overexposing by one stop. And then the processor inside of the camera is lowering that exposure by one stop to simulate the lower ISO that it's supposedly simulating. But why doesn't this work? What's, what's going on here? So if you're shooting raw, I'll be honest, it is an absolute waste of your time. You're gaining nothing by doing this. But if you shoot JPEG, this is where this mode is, is more aimed at. It's, it's designed at JPEG shooters. So if you're shooting raw, stop doing it immediately and I'll show you a couple of comparison images as to why. Like I say, it's overexposing the base ISO by one stop and then the processor in the camera is lowering the ISO by one stop. But in the process of doing that, what happens when you overexpose an image? Well, you lose a little bit of detail, you lose a little bit of the dynamic range. And that's what's going on here. That is why the clouds and the shadow areas look a little bit off on the JPEG compared to the raw file because the dynamic range has been reduced just a little tiny bit. So I took another photograph and this time I overexposed a raw file on purpose at base ISO by one stop and then lowered the exposure by one stop in Lightroom on my computer. And I just wanted to see the difference between me playing with the raw file and the camera editing its own raw file and outputting the JPEG. And what I found was my own overexposing and reducing the exposure gave a slightly better result than the camera did on its own when I dropped the exposure down by one stop. There was just a little bit more detail left in the clouds and in the shadows. Now, one of the reasons why you would choose a lower ISO is to perhaps save the highlights but that's not what's happening with the low ISO on this camera it's blowing out the highlights because it's overexposing so the low ISO expansion is working backwards to what you would normally expect the ISO to do if you wanted to get some shadow detail you would perhaps raise the ISO a little bit just increase the sensitivity although increasing the sensitivity isn't actually what's going on with the camera. I'll explain ISO in another video. It's more of an amplification thing than increasing sensor sensitivity to the light like it used to be on film. Your camera has something in it which amplifies the noise from the sensor and thus increases exposure. And uh, on a side note to ISO, higher ISOs don't actually produce more noise. The noise is always there, it's just the amplification that's increased 
and it just sort of makes the noise stand out a little bit. It's a little bit like turning up the volume on your television or on the cast area. You know, the higher the volume, the less sort of fidelity and clarity the audio has. Same thing's happening with ISO on a digital camera. You're just increasing amplification, which magnifies the noise that is already there. Anyway, I'm digressing a little bit. We'll go into that in a separate video at some point. Now, another thing that I did here was I took a third photograph. Now, I exposed correctly at base ISO, and I just wanted to take a base image just to edit and have a little bit of a play with. So here is the image exposed correctly. This is the unedited RAW file. Now you can see just how much more detail there is in the clouds and the shadows and everything. Everything just looked a little bit more natural and a little bit more normal compared to the other two images. Now this is the final edited photo. I just wanted to have a little bit of a play and just come away with one image. I've been at work a lot this last few days and I just decided to take a little bit of a, a ride on the motorcycle across the Humber Bridge to Baton just to take a photograph of the Humber Bridge. It's been a while since I've done that. In fact, I don't think I would have included any image of the Humber Bridge thus far on my YouTube channel. So here is a bit of a first. So I hope this little test that I went out and did just to play with the low ISO just to see if it was in fact doing what I thought it was and I hope the results that I've shown you has kind of swayed you away from using it a little bit if you're shooting raw. It's essentially a waste of time. This is the raw file that the camera took overexposed and you can see already in the raw file compared to the original just how much more information is included in there. So in reality shooting at the low ISO here has gained me nothing apart from a slightly overexposed image that I then have to deal with more later on. So it's just one of those things that came to my mind is I just want to see what the low ISO does. And for me, it's a waste of time. It's a marketing ploy. So thank you very much for watching. I know it's a bit of a short video, a bit of a rabbity rambling video, but I just wanted to get this out there. So thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video and you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and a like. It does help the video out and it brings new viewers to see my content. And if you liked a bit more, there is a subscribe button somewhere below me. You can always press that and you see more nonsense from me at my Olympus camera in the future. So until next time, I love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye.